Hey friends, welcome to today's video. I am so, so excited for today's video. I feel like I haven't sat down and filmed a video like this in a long, long time, and I need to get back to my roots. This is what I love doing. I love teaching makeup. So today I have a very uh, educational makeup video for you. I was thinking about it the other day, and I was thinking of uh, makeup trends and techniques that I used to do that I no longer do because I have gotten a little bit older, and my skin has changed, and my face is changing, and tips and tricks that I used to be able to do in my 20s or early 30s that really no longer longer serve me and making me feel like my best. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Things that I have changed as I've gotten older. Now, I do want to say this. I am not a person that believes that I should sit up here and tell you what's right and what's wrong when it comes to makeup. I don't feel like I should sit here and preach to anyone what they should or should not be doing when it comes to makeup. Um, I like to come from a place of, you know, I have a makeup artist background. I did wedding makeup for a long time, which means I worked on brides in their 20s and I worked on their mothers and their grandmothers. So I have experience working on skin of all ages. And generally speaking, um, you know, I think that most of us are trying to make our skin look a little bit more youthful, a little bit more younger. There are products and there are ways that we can do our makeup that can work against that. And so I'm just going to share that with you. However, if I say something in this video that you don't agree with or that you do something and you love the way that it looks on you, you keep on doing it. You keep on doing it. Don't let me or don't let anyone else here on YouTube tell you that you are wrong because makeup is personal and makeup is made to make us feel our best. And if it makes you feel your best, then you are doing the right thing. All right, so let's get started. I have a fresh face on. I wanted to actually sit here and demonstrate these tips and tricks um, and maybe show you the opposite too so that you could really see um, what I'm trying to explain. Rather than have my makeup here all pretty and sit here and talk to you and tell you, I really feel like that doesn't help. I wanted to show you, um, you know, exactly what I'm talking about. So I have nothing on my skin right now except moisturizer and skincare. The first thing that uh, really jumped out at me was um, I used to be able to wear full coverage foundations. I no longer like full coverage foundations on myself. I think in my head I, I want to have full coverage and flawless skin, but when I actually put on a full coverage foundation, I would say nine times out of 10, I do not like the way that it looks on my skin. It accentuates texture, meaning pores, fine lines, wrinkles, any place the skin is not perfectly smooth, it tends to uh, accentuate that. So that is the first tip that I wanna share with you guys is to switch from a full coverage, heavy, thick consistency foundation to something a little bit lighter. Some of my favorites that I grabbed are the Wander Nude Illusion Foundation, and Wander Beauty Nude Illusion Foundation, and the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation. Now, um, I feel like these both give pretty good coverage. I would say a good medium coverage, uh, but they go on so natural and they give the skin the most subtle, beautiful glow. So we're going to go ahead and go in with the Wander Beauty today. And I'm just going to apply this on, we'll do the right side of the face, my tips and tricks for for having a more youthful, younger appearance. Now, I always start in the center of my face and kind of apply there, and then I will go and blend out word to the perimeter of my face. We tend to have more discoloration or pigmentation or blemishes that we want to cover in the center of our face, so I always like to start there. Now, I like to press my brush in the center of the face. If you notice, I'm just kind of pressing, and then as I get out here to the perimeter of my face, then I will kind of use more stroke motions to blend out and shear out product. But by pressing, you're going to get more coverage with less product, which is the name of the game, right? Less product, more coverage. So for the foundation with fuller coverage, I'm just going to use the new Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. I'm not a super fan of this foundation. I actually did a foundation review and I'm not a fan. It's just too much coverage and it uh, really, really accentuates the pores in my skin because it is so full. You can see that. And I think most of us don't really even need all of this coverage. But in my 20s, I remember thinking, more is more, you know, give me all the coverage, give me all the makeup. And I could do that. Okay, so then I'm just gonna kind of blend it down. Now, what might fool you is a lot of times when you first apply full coverage foundations, initially they do look flawless and nice and beautiful. It's what happens throughout the day, I find, that um, is what we don't want. You know, it tends to transfer or move, break up, settle within the crevices of lines, like your smile lines or around your nose or in your pores. It might not do that initially, so you might first apply it and think, oh, this looks great. And then as the day goes on, you look in the mirror and things just look uh, 
not so great. <laughs> So now that we have foundation on, I want to talk to you guys about concealer and what I've changed as I've gotten a little bit older. So I used to be able to wear a very full coverage, heavy, thick concealer. I used to paint it all the way underneath my eye and like covering most of the real estate on my cheek. I can no longer do that. So now I use concealer a bit more sparingly. I really use just what I need and I look for formulas that are lightweight that do give good coverage because I do need that good coverage, but I need something lightweight and hydrating. Uh, one of my favorites that I recommend is Cover Effects. It is the Power Play Concealer. I really, really enjoy this concealer. It's very uh, lightweight and feels very hydrating, but it stays. It doesn't really move under the eyes or it doesn't crease on me. And I just usually apply a little bit right there in the inner corner and then I will go and blend it out. Now I love blending my concealer out with a beauty blender, a damp beauty blender, because it really does just make everything look more natural. Now under the eyes is a tricky part because that's where our skin is the most delicate and thin on the face. That also tends to be where we are the more driest. And it also tends to be where we show signs of aging first. So you're dealing with thin skin, dry skin, and texture. Uh, yet it also tends to be the area on the face that we need the most coverage because we have dark circles uh, or under eye bags. And so we need a product that will cover that without being too heavy or cakey. So I think that's why we tend to run into a lot of uh, issues with finding the perfect concealer. So I just like to use a beauty blender to kind of blend that in. Now on the other side, I'm gonna show you what I might have done 10 years ago that's just not serving me well now. And that is using a drier, thicker concealer. I just decided to grab the Benefit uh, Boyan Cakeless Concealer. This is a new one. And I have been playing with this. I, I haven't really decided how I feel about it. It's not one that I love, I do know that. I just don't know if it's one that I necessarily want to give a bad review on. It's just a, a little bit more drier, I find. And so what I used to do is I used to come down here and I would, you know, go all across the eye. I would even pull it up here and I'd even bring it down here to kind of highlight. I feel like, you know, five years ago on YouTube, this was the thing to do as well as apply it, you know, here and on the center of the nose and on the chin and <laughs> It was just like applying so much product on an area that you've already applied a full coverage concealer. So now you have this. So I'm gonna go in and blend this out with my beauty blender, same way. I think what's really confusing is that we see these techniques done in YouTube videos and it looks great. It looks flawless. Um, it looks beautiful. But I think what we need to remember is that uh, one, it's camera and the camera's, you know, a few feet away. We have a lot of lights on us, so it kind of softens and diffuses things. When you do this technique and use products like this in real life, layered in the way that I'm doing, when you step outside in natural light, it's you don't have these beautiful soft focus lights. You don't have that luxury. You see everything, you see all the makeup, you see you know, the texture in the skin. It's just, it can get confusing though because you see these videos and it looks so beautiful. Okay, so next let's talk about how we set the foundation. Now, I have really made a switch from pressed powders for the most part, to loose powders. I used to use Studio Fix foundation to actually set my foundation back in my 20s, which is crazy to me to think about it that way now. But now I like to use uh, translucent loose powders. Some of my favorites are the Danessa Myricks loose powder. I also love the Charlotte Tilbury Magic powder. This is a newer powder that I've been using and I really love it, so we're gonna use that. And I'm just going to um, set really kind of underneath my eyes, my forehead a bit, my nose, and the center of my face. Just enough to kind of mattify the skin, set the foundation, but not add a heavy layer of powder. So for the left side, I'm gonna take a powder foundation and we're gonna load my brush up. It's a pressed powder foundation and I'm going to set all over underneath my eyes, all over my skin with this. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you in so you can see the comparison in skin really quickly. So the right side is where we have the lighter products that I choose to opt for today. And then on the left side is where we have um, the full coverage foundation, the full coverage concealer, and the full coverage powder. Now, as I said, things may look really nice now, but throughout the day is when you start to see those products move and break up and settle into texture. I think you can also tell there's a clear bit more of radiance on my right side than on my left. 
Okay, so when it comes to blush, I used to wear a lot of blush. I used to wear matte, shimmer, frosty blushes, uh, you name it, I would wear it if it was a powder blush. And I used to pack it on like it was going out of style. <laughs> and now I have kind of laid off the blush. I still love a pretty colorful cheek, but I have definitely toned down the amount of blush that I use and the placement as well. So I wanna show you um, how I used to do my blush versus how I do it now. So I used to take something very uh, packed full of color. This is by number seven and it's the color uh, Apricot Blossom. And this is actually a blush that I would wear today. I would just be a little bit more uh, sheer in my application than I'm going to be now. And I would actually take a brush that was quite a bit smaller than my 104 BK Beauty brush, uh, but I don't have one sitting in front of me, so we're gonna use this. I would load up my brush and I would place that right on the apples of my cheek and I would bring it up. And I would really, really, really load it on. In fact, if you look at some of my first videos on YouTube, you will see exactly what I mean. I'm not making this up. So I would pack on the blush so it was just really, really intense. And that's how I would apply my blush. Now I like to apply my blush in a much sheer application. I still love, love, love powder br blushes and I wear them very often. Very recently, I've got into using cream or liquid products on the cheeks for color. And it is so stunning when you find the right product, especially for um, mature skin. So this product I have to share with you guys, it's by Charlotte Tilbury. It's the shade Glowgasm, or I'm sorry, that's the product, Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand and I have the shade Pink Gasm. You guys, this is stunning. So it comes like this, it has a little sponge tip applicator and I just kind of dot it right there on the apples of my cheek. You can see that's how it looks. Then I take a foundation brush or a sponge or your fingers and I just kind of smile and press it into the skin. It just blends in so sheerly and beautiful and gives the softest bit of glow. Now, I did apply loose powder. If you'll remember, I did apply powder before applying this. You can do it either way. If you are someone that likes to apply all your cream or liquids first and then set with powder, you can certainly do that. But as you can see, it goes on beautifully even if um, using a powder before. However, I did use a sheer translucent powder. I did not use a heavy full coverage powder. It would not translate as nicely on a thicker powder. So now you can see the difference in the two sides. This just gives a beautiful, soft, luminous, light glow. I think when it comes to having a youthful look to the skin, it really is all about like soft, blurred edges, sheer washes of color, nothing too harsh on any area of the face. Uh, so that's what you have when you are, you know, um, comparing the two sides of blush. This is a lot stronger, it's a lot harsher, it's harsher on the eye. This is softer, more uh, ethereal, more angelic, just more youthful. Okay, so let's talk eyes. I used to do this all the time, and now I look back and I'm like, oh, I can't believe I did that. It was apply a super shimmery, high shine, almost foiled like brow highlight. So uh, now I still like a little bit of sheen under the brow, but I like it to be much softer. And again, it's just to have that softer look to the face. So I used to take something with a whole lot of shimmer. I'm gonna use the shade by Sydney Grace. It's called uh, Bailey's Bliss, but it almost reminds me of like MAC Nylon. If you remember what that looked like, just highly, highly frosty. Uh, so I'm gonna go and apply this under my eye. This is how I used to wear my brow highlight. As you can see, it is so strong and pretty blinding. That's what that looks like. Okay, so then today what I would do is opt for something um, either matte or with a slight bit of sheen. I'm gonna dig into my Viseart palette. Now this is a matte shadow. Um, it's this shade right here. You can see that it's basically like, just kind of like a bisque eggshell color. And I'm gonna take the same brush. I do want this to be pretty intense, but because it's just a softer formula, it uh, is going to be just the right amount of brightness without being too much. Now, when it comes to eyes, I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little bit closer because I think these techniques need to be seen up close. Okay, so you can see the difference in the two eyes. Clearly, there's a big difference. You can see that the right side is just softer. It just has a softer, less, less harsh look. So I'm gonna go do the other parts of my makeup and I'll be right back. So I've gone ahead and applied a transition color that is pretty basic to what I would apply today. What I wanna show you guys on the right eye is how I do my eye makeup now, which is basically apply a uh, transition shade like this, something that's um, a couple shades darker than my natural skin tone uh, that's neutral. And then what I like to do is I like to apply a lighter color on the lid. Now that can vary between, you know, what 
shade I use, but overall I like it to be a little lighter and brighter. I do like it to have a little bit of shimmer to it to kind of highlight the eye, make the eye appear a little bit larger, uh, really brighten up that eye area. And you can see that it contrasts nicely with the color that we put in our crease, but I do like that to be a little bit brighter. Now, what I used to do a lot before is I would um, I would do this style of eye makeup, but I would also do my makeup a lot like a real smoky kind of dark all over. So I wanna show you what that does to the eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and reach in here. I'm gonna use this shade here. This is such a beautiful palette. This is by Wander Beauty. It is the Rush palette. And this is the shade that I just applied on my lid. This is the shade that I have in both creases. Now, instead of applying this one on my lid, on my left side, I'm gonna go and apply Swift, which is this darkest one here, on my eyelid. I'm gonna apply that all over. I used to do this a lot. I used to love a smoky eye, all about dark drama eye makeup. Not to say that I don't still wear a smoky eye from time to time, but what I'll do is I will place the darkness a little bit further out so I can still bring some of that brightness in the inner corner. Even if it's not like halfway over the entire lid, adding a little bit of brightness in the inner corner is going to make the eyes look more bright, more open. Using more of a matte dark shade like I'm doing is definitely gonna make the eye appear a little bit uh, smaller. And it's just, like I said, a little bit more of a harsher, stronger effect. Okay, so now you can see the two eyes and the difference is that having you know a dark matte shade versus having something lighter with a bit of shimmer. Now, I can still go and add depth in the outer corner here. So let's still use that same color, the color that we applied all over here. We're gonna use it on the right side. We're just going to place it right in the outer corner and kind of keep it concentrated right there. And then we can go and blend with our blending brush to soften it out. So you can still get that effect of having, you know, some drama, some sultriness to the eye, but by keeping that brightness in the inner corner, that's what gives you just brighter open eyes. Oh, that is so pretty. I really love this color combination. So as I'm looking in the mirror, I can tell that the left side, you're already starting to see that texture under the eye. So this is where we did a heavier concealer, foundation, powder. You can see that under my eye here looks much more dry. You can notice the texture in the inner corner versus the right side. Okay, so let's talk about lower lash line. Today, I like to use a mixture of either a soft eye coal pencil or a shadow with a smudger brush to create my lower liner. I like the liner to be soft. I don't like it to be harsh or strong. Even if I use a darker shade, I want it to be, um, like have this soft focus kind of diffused effect. So for the right side, I'm gonna take the uh, shade from here, from the Wander Beauty palette, this shade right here, and we're going to start with that shade and we're gonna go right underneath the lash line with the smudge it brush from BK Beauty. I like to start with a mid-tone shade first. Usually the shade that I use on my crease will work. And from there, I decide if I wanna add any more darkness, which I kinda of do. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna grab this shade here. It's called Swift. This is the one we did in the outer corner. And I'm gonna just take a little tiny bit of that and we're going to just keep that concentrated right here on the outer corner. I don't wanna bring it too far over because I want, again, the eyes to appear round and wide. Now on the left side, I used to do this all the time. I still remember this technique. Um, I would line the inner rim with a dark coal pencil, which I'm gonna do here in a second, and I would line the lower lash line with a really, really dark shadow. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I'm gonna actually bring it all the way over to the inner corner of the eye, because this is what I used to do. It was all about getting that really smoky, sultry effect. And again, too, it was makeup trends. You know, at the time, this was kind of the trend in makeup, and things have definitely shifted. You know, we see trends come and go, but really, you know, certain things we might keep around and might be something that we love to do. And I just wanna show you and kind of explain how it, um, how it may alter or enhance the eye shape. Okay. So let's talk about inner rim liner. This is something I used to do all the time and now I never do it on myself because I really don't think that it serves me well. And that is line my inner rim with a dark liner. I used to love to load up my inner rim right here with like a black or a dark, dark, dark brown. Uh, I love that look. 
I just don't love it on me anymore. My eye shape has changed a little bit as I've gotten older. You know, gravity starts to kick in and things start to kind of um, droop down a little bit. And so my eyes have taken more of a smaller kind of almond shaped look and I'm really going for kind of a brighter, wider. I like to make my eyes look brighter and wider and open. And doing something like this just kind of closes them off. Now, what I like to do now is line my eye with a brighter inner rim liner. And I really like this one from Wet n Wild. It's actually a brow highlight. So I'll just go in there and pop that in there. And you can see what that does. Now, if you ever feel like it's too white or too stark, because that can definitely happen, what I would recommend is grabbing a uh, your smudger brush and grabbing a shadow that is uh, not too dark. Again, you want to use something a little bit more on the mid-tone shade like you put in your crease and just kind of blending that into the lash line. And that'll kind of soften that uh, contrast a bit. Okay, so let's talk about lips. As you can see, I have a lot of texture to my lips. You can see a lot of lines, they're a bit dry. They're not the most full of lips, they're a little thinner. Uh, I used to wear bright, bold, matte shades on my lips all the time. Today, I lean for something a bit glossier, creamier, um, something that's gonna make my lips appear more uh, voluminous, enhanced, and hydrated. So I wanna show you what kind of what that looks like. So uh, on the left side of my lips, we're gonna do a matte shade. And I actually love this product. It's by Persona Cosmetics and it's the shade Flamingo. It's a matte pink liquid lipstick. I actually really like these, this formula a lot. It's very, very comfortable on the lips. I love this color. I just think it's like the perfect bubblegum pink. Not too bright, but not too nude or subdued. And then on the right side, I'm gonna use a gloss. Now this is one of my favorite formulas of lip gloss because it's very pigmented. So it really is a product that you can wear alone. I don't think you need to layer it on top of a lipstick or a liner. It is the Amour Shine Lip Gloss by Milani. And this is the shade Enchanting. And I'm gonna apply this on the right side of my lips. Now, as the liquid lipstick starts to dry, you can see that you do notice more texture in my lips. You tend to notice more lines on the left side than you do on the right. The right looks more full, looks more plump, looks more hydrated. So that's probably the biggest change in lip trends that I do now today that I um, didn't really do as much you know, back in the day. And again, I love this lips, liquid lipstick formula. I'm not knocking it, I actually really love it. It's been in a favorite video of mine, but for the purpose of this video, which is talking about makeup trends and uh, techniques that um, could work against giving you that youthful appearance, I would say the liquid lipstick, the matte lipstick is one of those that's gonna work against that. All right, so before I zoom you guys out, I just wanna kinda of give you one last look at the two sides so that you can really notice the differences. Now that the foundation has had some time to set, um, I'm gonna scoot you guys even a little bit closer. So that wraps up this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. If you learned anything, one thing, let me know in the comment section below. I love reading those comments. Uh, if you have any tips or tricks that you have changed or tweaked as you've gotten a little bit older or things that just aren't really serving you, let us know in the comment section below. We love learning from each other. I love this community. I love you guys so, so much for contributing and being a part of the conversation. As always, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.